In this set of examples, we want to find the degree of each of these terms. And remember, the degree is the exponent on the variable. And if I look at 3, 3 is really 3 times x to the 0 power. So the degree is 0. And this is true for all constant terms, meaning if it's missing a variable, its degree is 0. Now if I look at 3x, this is really 3x to the first power, therefore it has a degree of 1. And that's true for all things that are linear. 3x is linear and it has a degree of 1. Now this example is a little more straightforward because the exponent is right there on the variable, so this thing has a degree of 4. And we call this a quartic term. Now this one is special and we don't really see this very much in Algebra 1. This is more prep work for Algebra 2. You notice there are two variables so when I want to find the degree of a term that has multiple variables what I have to do is add up the exponents. So I'm going to add the exponents on the variable. I have a square and I have a first degree which means that's a third degree. Now this one is also preparation for Algebra 2 because this radical means that I have an exponent of a fraction. In this case, it's a half. And so the square root of x has a degree of 1 half. Now this one, the exponential term, has a degree of x because this is exponential. Now these last three are not a part of polynomials, but I just wanted you to see what those degrees were. Now this is the actual definition of a polynomial. It is a term, or the sum and differences of terms, specifically terms in a single variable, with whole number degrees, meaning only degrees 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to infinity. No fractions, no negatives in the degree, just whole numbers, and no x's as exponents. So linear functions are a subset of the polynomial functions. Quadratics are a subset of the polynomial functions. However, exponential functions do not belong here at all. Okay, so no x as exponents, no fractional exponents, and fractional exponents means radicals, so no square roots of x. So for this example, we are going to circle things that are polynomials and x out things that are not polynomials. So first and foremost, let's cross off things that are not polynomials, okay? So exponential functions are not polynomial functions. I see something that has negative exponents, so therefore that is not a polynomial. And then if I look at this one, x plus 1 is a polynomial, 2x minus 4 is a polynomial, but never did I say you could have quotients, which this is, of things with x. So that's not a polynomial. This is actually called a rational function, as is this one. These two are both rational. And then I have this thing right here, 3 to the x power, exponential. And I look around and I see this thing. Okay, so 3x squared plus root 2x plus 5. All right, now my rule was the exponents on the x had to be whole numbers. This exponent on this x is squared. This exponent on this x is 1. And this is 5. So actually, this one here is a polynomial. All right? Now you'll notice that the square root of 2, that vinculum for the square root does not group the x in. Now if I extended this square root symbol out to include the x, then it's not a polynomial. But what this square root of 2 is, is actually a coefficient. It's a square root of 2 times x. And so none of the degrees are messed with, that's a polynomial. Now quadratic functions are polynomials, which means 4x squared minus 4 is a polynomial. Linear functions are polynomials, which means x plus 4 is a polynomial, and that leaves 5. Now 5 actually is a polynomial. It's a super lame polynomial, but it's a polynomial of degree 0. So those are examples of polynomials.
So we've actually been working with polynomials pretty much the whole year, with the exception of when we talked about square roots with variables under them and those exponential functions. Everything else has been a polynomial. And if you want to add or subtract a polynomial, it's just combining like terms, which we've done since the second six weeks. You just have to be careful if it's subtraction, because subtraction, remember, means that everything in the parentheses gets subtracted. So I have 4x squared plus 2x, and then I need to sprinkle the negative. So I get a negative 8x squared, a minus 4x, because that's minus 8x squared and minus 4x. But then it's minus a negative, which is plus 5. So be very careful when you subtract and watch your signs. And since this is all in one variable, when I'm done with this, I can check it on my calculator by testing the original and my answer. And so now then I just have to do this combination here. So 4x squared minus 8x is negative 4x squared. 2x minus 4x is negative 2x plus 5. And then I have to box off and happy face my answer. Because I can't do anything more to this. x squareds and x's are not the same thing. They can't be combined. So these are squares that live in two dimensions. These are not squares that live in one dimension, and that's just a 5. So this is simplified. Don't combine terms that do not have the same degree. Now this leads us to multiplying polynomials. And multiplying polynomials we've also done. And that was, you know, FOIL or Leo B multiplication. That's how you multiply polynomials. So I'm going to use Leo B for this one because FOIL doesn't have enough letters. So I have 3x squared plus 4x minus 5 times 2x plus 1. And remember, I have to multiply everything by 1 first. So I get negative 5, 4x, and 3x squared. And then I multiply everything by 2x. So 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. 2x times 4x is... 8x squared, and 2x times 3x squared is 6x cubed, because I have one more x multiplied on. And now I add, and remember, you have to have the same variables to the same powers in order to combine them. So there's only one x cubed, so I have a 6x cubed, plus now I have two x squared, so I add their coefficients or the numbers in front. So 3 plus 8 is 11x squared. And then I have two x terms. One is negative 10, one is 4. So that gives me negative 6x, because all I have to deal with is 4 minus 10. And then a minus 5. And I can't do anything else to it, because remember, you have to have the same degree to be added together. So I have 6x cubes plus 11x squared minus 6x minus 5. And if you want to check, you can just type those both into the calculator and make sure your answer works. Now, polynomials actually just represent numbers. So this represents some number. And so we can add it to other numbers. We can subtract it from other numbers. We can multiply it. We can also divide polynomials. And we can factor them, like we can factor 6 into 2 times 3. So those are the next operations we're going to work with. We're going to work with factoring next, and then we're going to end up after that dividing polynomials, just like you divide numbers. And now for our check for the polynomials defined lesson. First, I want you to state the degree of the given term. Then I want you to state the degree of the polynomial. And then I want you to name this polynomial, and I don't mean like name it Bob or something, I mean mathematically what is its name. And then I want you to simplify this expression, and then I want you to simplify this last expression as well. 